Today I want to share with you an old-fashioned hamburger casserole recipe. This is an affordable, easy-to-make meal that's perfect for a weeknight supper. Hi, sweet friends! I'm Mary, and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods, like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, this recipe has been around for a long time, and chances are you or your mom or your grandmother have your own version. Now, I'm going to share with you how I like to make this, but by all means, make this your own and make any substitutions you want. Now, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you're going to need a frying pan, and we're going to start this on the stovetop. Now, if you have an oven-proof frying pan like I do here, a cast iron frying pan, great. But if not, don't worry. After you prepare your ingredients in your frying pan on the stovetop, you can transfer them into a baking dish that then can go into your oven. Now let's go over the ingredients that you're going to need, and I'll talk about some substitutions you can make. The star of the show, more or less, is going to be one pound of ground meat. Now I'm going to use ground beef, but you could also use ground turkey or ground chicken. Next, you're going to want some potatoes. I've got four small potatoes here. If you have two large ones, that's great. And you can use any kind of potato that you like. And if you really want to stretch this meal, by all means, you can add extra potatoes. Next, you're going to want two onions. I've just got two medium size here. Of course, if you have a big onion, that'll be fine. This is not an exact science. Now it's the potatoes, the onions, and your ground meat that really make up the bulk of this hamburger casserole. Now, can you add other things? Definitely. I really like to add a green bell pepper chopped up and some diced tomatoes. If you have fresh tomatoes, you can definitely dice those up yourself. Otherwise, you can use canned tomatoes. We're just going to drain off the liquid. Now you can even kind of make this a clean out the crisper meal, which I've shared with you that term in the past, where you basically look in your crisper and see if there are any vegetables that you want to go ahead and add into this. You could add some carrots, you could add a little cauliflower, maybe that might be fun. You could add a variety of vegetables. A hamburger casserole is kind of a great place to sort of sneak veggies into your meal. Then you're just going to need some salt and some pepper. I also have some red pepper flakes here. Uh, that's if you like a little spice, but by all means you can leave that out. Next, you're going to want about a cup of grated cheese. And you really can use pretty much any cheese you like. I've got Monterey there, Monterey Jack. It melts really nicely, and so I like to use that. But you could certainly use a cheddar or a provolone or anything that you like. And then you're going to need a cup of liquid. I've actually got chicken bone broth here, uh, it, which is fine. You're not going to notice a strong chicken flavor that's going to compete with the ground beef. It's going to be just fine. Uh, you could use water if you wanted. You could use beef bone broth if you have that. Any liquid will work great. As a matter of fact, if some of you are familiar with the lovely lady over at the Hillbilly Kitchen, she likes to use milk in her hamburger casserole. I think that must make a wonderful creamy hamburger casserole, so definitely something to think about. And finally, the last thing that you're going to need is some cornstarch and just about a teaspoon. Now, if you can't take corn products, no problem. You could substitute a little arrowroot powder or a little tapioca powder, and that'll do the job perfectly. Now I've set my cooktop to a medium heat, and I've actually greased my cast iron pan. Even though it's well seasoned, I do like to give it a little bit of a grease, and I've just used some bacon grease to do that. Uh, but if you're using a nonstick pan, uh, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, I find that just adding that little bit of bacon grease adds a little flavor. But if you're using ground turkey or ground chicken, you may want to add a little fat so that nothing sticks. The hamburger meat I'm using is 85% meat, 15% fat. So there's going to be plenty of fat in here, uh, so I don't have to worry about sticking. But ground, be uh, ground chicken and ground turkey tend to be leaner, so you may want to add in about a tablespoon of ghee or butter or butter and olive oil, something like that. Now I'm just going to break this up, and I'm going to cook this until it browns. 
Well, I cooked up the hamburger meat until it was nicely browned. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the onion. Now, if you don't like onions, you certainly can leave it out, but it does add a nice flavor. And if you like garlic, you can certainly add garlic to this too. Now I'm just going to cook the onions along with the meat for a couple of minutes. It took about five minutes or so to brown uh, the ground beef. And now I'm going to give it another two or three minutes with the onions just to let them soften. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in a teaspoon of salt. And I'm also going to give this a couple of good turns of freshly cracked black pepper. And then if you like a little spice at this point, you can go ahead and add in, uh, I'm adding in a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Certainly add as much or as little as you like or leave it out. Now I'm just going to mix all this up and then I'm going to let those onions just soften a little more while I dice up the potatoes. Now I want to mention, don't throw away any of your scraps. Don't throw away your onion peels or your potato peels or any scraps you have left over from a green pepper if you're using one. All of this can go into your scrap bag that you can use when you make bone broth or broth or stock or just a very simple vegetable broth. So don't waste anything. Everything has nutrition. Now I want to mention if you're not in the mood for peeling potatoes or it's an exceptionally busy weeknight uh, or you're tired and you just want to get a jump on this, you can easily use uh, canned potatoes that are cubed. And if you use those canned potatoes, that definitely cuts down on the cooking time. So you can have this ready really fast. And basically what I do when I dice up my potato is just kind of a nice bite-sized chunk, uh, not too big, not too small, uh, so it doesn't disintegrate, but small enough so that, as I said, it's bite-sized and it'll cook quickly. Well, the onions have softened nicely, and now I'm going to go ahead and add in our potatoes. Well, I've got those potatoes added and all mixed in with the meat and the onions, and now I'm going to prepare my green pepper. Well, while I was cutting up that green pepper, it gave the potatoes a little bit of a chance to start getting a head start on cooking. And I just want to show you that I've just cut these about, that I've cut the green pepper about the same size uh, as I did the potatoes. Again, just kind of a small bite size. Now, I want to mention, sometimes at the grocery store, you can find uh, frozen green bell peppers uh, already cut up for you. That would be another time saver. Also, if you didn't want to use green peppers, but you did want to have some type of pepper in there, you could always use jarred pimentos, which are, you know, kind of along the lines of the sweet uh, red bell peppers. So that might be nice too, and also very easy. And if you wanted to give this a real spicy kick, you could even put some jalapeno in here and then add in some uh, nice, you know, Tex-Mex seasoning. You could put in some cumin, some coriander. Oh, I think it'd be delicious. Now I've drained my tomatoes, my canned tomatoes, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and add those right in to my frying pan. Now, since you do need to add liquid to this, you could always use this uh, assuming you, know, you might have to add some water you know, to get up to one cup, you could always add this as your liquid. But I do find that if I use the juice that comes with the tomatoes, sometimes it can just cause a little bit of a uh, coloring to the potatoes. So keep that in mind, but don't throw this out. You can pour this you know, into a plastic container as is, put it in your refrigerator or your freezer, save it next time you're making a soup. Uh, or you could put it in ice cube, freeze it in an ice cube tray and just use one at a time to add a little extra flavoring to something, uh, like if you're making a rice dish or a grain dish. But whatever you do, don't throw it out. That's got a lot of flavor and nutrition. Now, in addition to seasoning this with kind of a Tex-Mex uh, seasoning mix, you could also, at this point, add in some uh, Italian seasoning. You, know, you could do like just some oregano or oregano and basil or the actual Italian seasoning mix. I have a video where I show you how to make a homemade version of that and a lot of seasoning mixes, which I'll definitely uh, link to. And that would add some wonderful flavor. And then maybe with the Italian seasoning, you could top this with uh, some grated provolone or some grated mozzarella. Oh my gosh, I think that'd be delicious. But today we're just going to keep it simple, salt and pepper.
Alrighty, now we're ready to add in the last of our ingredients. And at this point, what you want to do, depending on how uh, small or large you've cut your potatoes, just check them, you know, with the uh, point of a knife or, or a, um, uh, a fork, whatever you have, and see how done they are, because that'll determine how much time you want to give this in the oven. My potatoes are cut on the smallish side and in just putting the knife in it goes in pretty easy so I have a feeling that these are probably cooked half or three quarters of the way through so I'm probably going to put this in the oven for just about 15 minutes. Well I've got my chicken bone broth here and my cornstarch and I'm going to go ahead and add this right in and then I'm going to use my little magic whisk, whisk. Those of you who've been with me for a while, you know I love this little thing. I'm just going to give this a good mix around. Now if you want to learn how to make bone broth, make it homemade, I have a lot of videos on how to make uh, chicken bone broth, beef bone broth, uh, pork bone broth, fish bone broth, all kinds of bone broth. And they're very affordable to make, especially chicken bone broth. You can make it for pennies just using the carcass uh, of a chicken. So definitely check out those videos if that's something you want to learn how to do. Alrighty, well I've got this uh, cornstarch mixed well in here and I'm going to go ahead and just pour this right over my casserole in the making. Yeah, well I've got my bone broth all poured in here and adding that little bit of cornstarch really helps uh, thicken this so it has like a little bit of a gravy feeling when you go to uh, scoop it out after it's all cooked. Uh, but again, if corn products don't agree with you, uh, you can use arrowroot, you can use tapioca, you can also just use plain flour. Now I'm just going to turn the heat off because we're going to get ready to put this in the oven and I'm going to go ahead and top it with the cheese. Well, I've got the cheese all sprinkled on top of my casserole. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop this in my oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to let this bake for about 15 minutes. Then we'll take it out and we'll give it a taste. And how you can tell when your casserole is done is that the cheese is going to be nice and bubbly and somewhat golden and browning on top. Well, I wound up leaving this in my oven for about 20 minutes to make sure that the cheese got nice and golden on top. But everybody's oven is different, so check yours at about 15 minutes and then just watch it over the next few minutes until you get the cheese looking just the way you like it. Now I just let this rest for about five minutes because this is super hot when it comes out of the oven. And this way everything can just settle a little uh, before you slice into it. But I think everyone is going to be so pleased when you bring this to the table. Well, let's take a scoop and we'll give it a taste. Well, I'll take a close-up picture so you can see exactly what this looks like underneath the cheese. It came beautiful. The cornstarch helped to thicken and make, a little, make the liquid a little bit of a gravy, which I think is going to be very tasty. And the potatoes are cooked to perfection. Well, let's give this a taste. I want to get some of this cheese topping. I think this is going to be pretty hot. we got to be careful. Let's see how it is. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Oh, the potatoes are done beautifully. Everything, all the flavors come together so nicely. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make more affordable meals, be sure to click on this video over here where I have them not only affordable, but also tasty and easy to make. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.